The next thing we're going to look at is a different form of, I guess you could call it memory corruption or data corruption. Um, vulnerability is basically um, integer overflows, or, or overflows kind of of any um, numeric data type that could result in an overflow. So if you recall the way we store, uh, based on the way we store numbers in computers, you know, we'll, we'll select a number of bits to store that data type, and whether it's signed or unsigned, that number of bits can only store so many values, right? So for example, um, you know, if we had eight bits, we could store either values negative 128 to positive 127, or zero to 255. And the tricky stuff comes when I've got, say, an eight bit integer type, which we don't really have, like a byte type or something like that. Um, and we had a, the value of 127 stored in that, and we added one to it, Again, based on you know the way our numbers are represented and overflow and then binary arithmetic works, uh, we would add one to this and we'd actually sort of wrap around and end up on the bottom end of this value, right? Or if we had 255 and we added one, we'd end up with a zero. And we typically refer to that as an overflow or when we go the underway, uh, when we go the other way, some sort of an underflow. This has consequences when it comes to things like buffer overflows and heap overflows because if we are using some integer value to determine you know, the number of bytes we're going to copy in a buffer or the number of bytes to allocate, uh, any kind of an overflow can result in the wrong number of bytes being copied or the wrong number of bytes being allocated, which then leads to the potential for a buffer overflow or heap overflow vulnerability. So in this example, um, we've got some, maybe it's a function for you know making a copy of some array, maybe. Um, so we have um, say vowels that takes an, an array of longs and some number of values that we want to copy is an unsigned int. And we create sort of an internal array that we're later going to allocate memory to to hold the values that we want to copy from this first array. We determine how many bytes we need to copy, so we'll take the size of um, the long data type because that's the kind of value we're storing in our array. And we'll multiply that by the number of values we want to store because, you know, if a long is you know eight bytes or something like that or six bytes or four bytes and we need to multiply that by the number of values we want to store that's going to give us the total number of bytes we're going to use that number of bytes then um, in our call to malloc and then typecast them to a long before we um, assign them uh, into the array uh, that should there should be an asterisk here we're actually assigning to um, a pointer to long or whatever uh, then we're going to loop through some for loop that's going to iterate the number of vowels and copy the data from the parameter array into the array we've just created and eventually do something with that value. Now the vulnerability basically exists in these two lines. The actual numeric overflow can potentially execute here uh, where we're doing numvals times size of long because if the value coming in was the largest possible unsigned int we could have, so something like max int, and we multiplied that by however many bytes a long is on this um, platform or implementation, we'll say eight bytes for argument's sake, that value max int times eight obviously overflows um, the integer type, right? And we're gonna end up generating some smaller number. Oh, notice here we're also using the wrong data type. We don't, we're not using an unsigned int, it's just an int. So there's a couple of reasons we could end up allocating the incorrect number of bytes in this call to malloc, which eventually when we start to copy values from the first array into the newly created array, it could mean that there's not enough data in this array and then we've created essentially a heap overflow because this copy operation doesn't do any kind of bounds checking, it will just copy bytes into this new array until we're done copying. So there, the overflow created the potential for some kind of the numeric overflow created a potential for a heap overflow. There are a number of ways um, to avoid uh, integer overflows. So we can do range checking uh, during our data validation. You know, yes, we're using an unsigned int as our data type, but we probably know maybe we're never going to get close to the upper bound for that. So we can check to see how many values we're actually going to be using. We can do pre and post calculation validation. You know, um, these are just sanity checks on the data. For example, if I add large positive number to large positive number, the result should be strictly greater than, you know, either one of them. Um, if we're multiplying two positive numbers, we should never get a negative number, things like that. Um, and depending on the situation, there might be, um, you know, validation operations you can do before and after calculations um, to determine if an overflow occurred. There are other ways of detecting overflows as well. We can also consider type strictness, 
right? Um, are we adding signed to unsigned values or unsigned to signed values? Where are we storing the results? Um, our destination data type, is it as big as it could possibly be or is it as big as it needs to be? For example, if we're multiplying two integers together, um, it's possible that we could get a value that's larger than the int data type. So maybe if you're multiplying two ints, you should store the result in a long, if there's the potential for the two ints to be very big, and that won't result in an overflow. Um, we're going to do a demo in just a second, but for this last slide, this was a challenge put up on a whiteboard in, at Hackfest in 2014 um, from the Canadian um, Security Establishment, the CSE, and Basically, they uh, pointed out that there's a bug in this code. So if you want, you can pause the video here, have a look and try to figure out what that value might be. Um, it's assumed that you can manipulate um, the value coming in as SOC FD to create um, some kind of a bug in this code. So pause it and have a, have a think. Um, there is a value that would result in that. I'm not going to tell you either. You can just figure it out. Okay. So we're going to go look at a demo now. Okay, so in this folder I have um, a couple of files, intoverflow.c and a make file. I will have a look at intoverflow. So we have some imports like limits, uh, which give us access to constants like um, int min and int max and things like that. We're going to print out the values of the regular signed um, integer values, so the minimums. Um, what happens when we subtract one from int min. We're also going to print out int max and see what happens when we add one to int max and do the same thing with the unsigned int max and add one to that. Then we have a little bit of a contrived scenario here where you know we're going to take some number of records and the size of those records. So it's going to say, hey, how many records do you want to enter? Uh, both of these are unsigned ints and we're going to print that out and then how large is each record we're going to print that out and then it's going to say hey we're about to allocate this much space so we'll see um, based on the manipulation of these two values uh, you know what can result uh, when we get in overflows and we'll have access to the maximum value for unsigned in there so we can uh, sort of play around with that so we'll use make to build it okay we're going to get warnings about um, data types and things like that that's fine Okay, so we run it and we get here's int min and then int min minus one basically gives us int max, right, which is down here. And then int max plus one gives us int min, right? So that's where we're seeing sort of the overflows and the wraparounds happen. Now, um, when we have the unsigned int max, and, which is this value, and we add one to it, we wrap around to the other side and in an unsigned int, that would be zero. So uh, we know that in this scenario, both of the records we're going to be entering are un unsigned ints. So, for example, it's saying how many records are you going to enter? Well, let's just copy this value and we'll paste it. How large is each record? Well, if each record is going to be two bytes, this is how many bytes we were about to allocate. Um, 4294967295. We just allocated 7294. So it was an overflow. It was a very small overflow um, because it wrapped all the way around and got almost back up to here. Um, but you can see we're under allocating by a byte. We can run that again. Um, we'll paste int max again, uh, u int max, and we'll put a larger value, maybe 10. This time, um, you'll notice we allocated fewer bytes than uh, necessary by a larger margin there. Um, so again, we're, here we're creating the potential for some kind of overflow uh, because of these two records being, or these two values being multiplied together. And that's it.